In this video, we're going to focus on iteration statements. Uh, there are several different iteration statements available to you in C Sharp. I think for right now, on day one, we're just going to focus on a single one called the for loop. Sometimes when you're developing software, you just need to loop through or rather iterate through a series of checks until you find a successful match. Uh, actually, you'll do this more than you anticipate. So while it might not seem all that useful at first, it, these examples might not seem all that useful here at the outset, trust me, you're going to find situations where you need this in your toolbox. So let's get started. We're going to build a new project and we're going to call it four iterations for loops, iteration statements, whatever you want to call it. All right, and so now I need to set up this example's uh, user interface. We'll use a single button. I do want to go ahead and take the effort, the time required to name this and change uh, the content. You can skip ahead if this isn't all that interesting to you. And then I'm going to take a text block and this time I'm going to kind of make it tall and narrow. I'm going to get rid of the text inside of it and I'll call it my text block one more time. And then we'll double click inside of the button and I'm going to start writing some code here that is going to look a little strange, but again, we're going to explain it after we get it working here. So I'm going to start with a four. All right, so I've written all my code. And before I explain it, let's just run it to make sure it works. OK, awesome. So let's start back then and start looking at this, this for statement. You know, the syntax for the for statement, quite honestly, is probably the most cryptic of anything that you've seen up to this point. Yet again, I'm betting that you could probably figure this out on your own if you really just stared at it long enough. In fact, go ahead, take a moment, pause the video, and guess how it's working, what those little statements inside of that, uh, the parentheses are actually trying to do. Assuming that you haven't already figured it out and you moved on to the next video, let me explain a couple of things about how this works. First of all, what we're creating is a temporary variable that we'll use to key off of as we iterate through this code block a number of times. In this case, we're creating an iterator that I just used a shorthand for uh, a variable called i. So we're creating an integer uh, uh, called i that will start off with the value of 0. Then, as you can see, we use a semicolon. That's a complete thought. We're going to move on to the next thought, which is um, a, a condition. As long as our value is less than 10, then continue to execute the block of code beneath the for statement. Uh, finally, every time that you do that check, iterate the value of 1 by i. That is the i plus plus part. It's the equivalent of doing something like i equals i plus 1. Okay, We just increase the number by 1. So each time in the body, we're as we iterate through it, we're building this message variable, which is a string. So we're going to take the message and add to whatever was previously in the message the value of i. So we have to use the toString method that we learned about uh, several lessons ago. And also I'm going to use this strange system.environment.newLine. Um, and this is called an enumeration. It's an enumeration that will give us just that line break, okay? So system is the namespace, environment is a class name, and environment has several enumerated values uh, that would equate to telling the computer that we want to start on a new line. So just keep that in your bag of trips, tricks. We'll talk about enumerations a little bit more later. Not something you really need to concern yourself with now, other than the fact that if you need to you know, move to a next line, for some reason, you can use that. Or you can use, uh, as we look at the 
at the string uh, uh, manipulation video in day two. I'll give you some other options as well. Okay, so once we've done that, then we, uh, at some point, we're going to move to out of the, the code block when this is no longer true. So when we've iterated and uh, to the, the final iteration where i will now equal 10, then we pop out of this loop, execute this line of code, and then move on to the end of that event handler. Um, and so another thing that we need to know is that uh, we're starting with the number zero. We can start with any number here that we like. In fact, I could change this to five and rerun the application. And when we start off, it'll just go five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then stop when we hit that final condition. When this is no longer true, then we break out of our code block and continue on with our, with our execution. Okay, so let me do this. I'm gonna actually comment out these lines of code and look, whoops, let's hit Control Z on the keyboard there. Don't want to remove it completely. And I want to create another example briefly for our consideration to see another variation on this idea. All right, so for int equals i, int i equals zero. Okay, so before I explain it, let me just run it to make sure that I didn't introduce any subtle bugs into this. Okay, it seems to work. Now, admittedly, this isn't a very exciting application. What we actually accomplished here was a nested if statement inside of the four uh, statements code block. So we have a code block within a code block. Uh, we're iterating through and we're checking each time we iterate through to see if we're currently on the number seven. If we're not on the number seven, then we're gonna skip over this code block and then move on and iterate one more time. But once we find that this condition is true, that i is in fact seven, then we'll set our message variable equal to, hey, we found seven, and then we'll break out of that. And here again, we see that break statement that we saw previously in the switch uh, uh, statement video. Um, just one or two uh, videos ago, right? Uh, and what this will do is pop out of all of the code blocks and it'll no longer uh, be continue to iterate through until this condition is met. And to prove that, what I want to do is set a breakpoint right here in this first line of code and I'm going to start debugging one more time. And this time when I click on the click me button, execution is going to stop here and I'm just going to keep stepping over lines of code until we get to seven. So this is gonna be a little monotonous for a moment. Hey, and you know what? Instead of doing this, maybe I should just set a breakpoint right here and then choose the continue button in the toolbar so that I don't have to keep pressing the step over button. Let's try that. All right, so now I'm gonna hover my mouse cursor over I and I is indeed seven. So we have met the condition and I'm gonna step over this line of code and when I do that, look at the locals window, it'll show me that, well, it should have shown me that message uh, was now just uh, changed from an empty string to the word found seven. Um, maybe it's the fact that I didn't have it over there in the first place. But the next, I wanna see what happens now when we hit this break statement. Will it continue on to this line of code, this line of code, this line of code, or will it go here? What do you think will happen? Well, let's find out. All right, so the break statement broke us out of both the if and the for loop and went directly to the next line of code after the, uh, the code block defined by the for statement. And so now we can just continue on and see the result. So I wanted you to be aware of the benefit of the break statement to prematurely break out of a, of, of a loop when we have met the condition that we we're looking for. So a for iteration has its utility. However, more importantly is the notion that there are C-sharp commands like the for loop that allow us to iterate through a group of things and evaluate them. 
So we're going to be using a variation of this called the for each statement uh, once we begin working with collections of information later on in day two and day three. All right, so hang in there. You're doing great. Just one more concept before we move on to our exercise for today. We'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.